Saturday, February 17th, 2018, President's Day weekend. The banks of the Colorado River at Gateway Park in downtown Yuma, Arizona, are going to be rocking with the fourth annual Boogie Brews and Blues Festival. And if it's a blues festival happening in Yuma or happening up in the mountains in San Diego and Julian, you know that Rob Bauer is presenting himself <laughs> and others. <laughs> Go to Rob Dash Bauer's present. Excuse me, Rob Dash Bauer presents dot com, and that's Rob with two B's because he's special that way. We call him the Blues Moose because he does love the blues. He's also part of the McCoy Brothers Band, and I can't wait to play some of their music. But uh, you know, to get us all ready for this festival. Uh, we've got some of the special guests uh, performing there, joining us on the show. We've got Rob Bauer. Rob, how are you doing, dude? Hi, ladies. Nice how to hear you? your voices again. You too. And, you know, we love to, you know, hear the voice of the Blues Moose. So we're so glad we get to call you the Blues oh. Moose again on the show since you put <laughs> Bullwinkle on the front page of, you know, <laughs> of your website. So I thought it was, you know, that was a sign to us to continue to call you, call you the Blues Moose. It's a flying squirrel. <laughs> okay, this is going to be one of those shows. This is going to be one of those. Moose and squirrel. I know. Everybody gets to be like squirrels. Just, you know, be nice to them. We've got festival headliner guitarist Alistair Green back on the show, and uh, he's got a brand new album out, Dream Train. Alistair, it rocks. How are you? I'm good, and and, and thank you for saying so. I, we, uh, we're really are proud of the record and uh yeah doing good thanks for having me on the show appreciate it always oh. always last time you were on the show you were heading out to julian i think that was a couple years ago right that you were going to the julian blues festival. yeah i think we did julian yeah it's been it's i think it was what what year is it 18 so yeah i guess it was 16, 2016 <laughs> yeah exactly Right on, right on. Uh, also on the show, we have Richard Blitz, the founder of the Blitz Brothers. So if you want to get Blitz, like, tune into them, and we've got some good music from them that we're going to play on the show. Richard, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I, I'm doing fine. Good morning to both of you, all of you guys. Hey, hey. it's going to be a party. It's a, it's a party show today. We're excited about this. Now, I know, Alistair, I know you're on a time schedule here, so let's start with you, and we'll play uh, Dream Train in a little second here. So whenever you need to bail, just say, i got to bail. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll, 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 hang, I'll hang as long as I can. Right on, cool. right on. So you're in Memphis. Tell us what, what's going on in Memphis. Um, well, this is uh, what's called the International Blues Challenge Week, uh, where bands from all over the world come and play. Uh, you know, it's kind of a competition, I guess you can say. Um, I'm out here just doing shows with my band and doing some showcases. And uh, there's basically two big events in the blues world that happen in Memphis it's this this week. And then in May, there's the Blues Music Awards. And uh, it's a just it's a great opportunity just to kind of meet everybody, uh, you know, promoters and labels and other musicians and agents and everybody kind of, you know, converges on Memphis. And uh, and it's a great time. And so, you know, my band's been playing. Uh, we played uh, night before last. We did a, a showcase at the Rum Boogie with a bunch of uh, uh, artists that my publicist represents. Amy Brad of Brat Girl Media is putting on some events, and uh, and then last night we had a big guitar showdown, and my band uh, was kind of backing up a lot of the artists. And uh, I was telling Rob uh, a little while ago that the big highlight from uh, from last night was uh, one of the, our first guest on the on the stage because he had some other obligations. Was Walter Trout, who's one of the great blues rock right legends uh, of all time. Yeah, he's the so man. He got up, yeah, so he got up and did a couple songs and just blew the roof off the joint. And then he invited Bob Margolin up on the stage, who was Muddy Waters' guitar player, you know, yeah. during the during the seventies and stuff. And so for me, just as a guitar geek, to be on stage with Walter Trout and Bob Margolin pretty much made my year. And uh, nice. So that's what's going on, and tonight, you know, we're just going to cruise around and check some stuff out, maybe try to go to the Stax Museum, and then tomorrow my wow. band's doing a full show at a place called Lafayette's uh, early evening show, and then we're going to play a fundraiser for the Play It Forward uh, Foundation at the Hard Rock a little later. So we're just trying to stay busy and be out playing and, and schmoozing and bluesing, and uh, it's, it's, a great, it's, a great time. it's a great time, and, and if you haven't been to Memphis – uh, it's you know there it's it's definitely not the place to be if you're trying to uh, shed any holiday pounds. The pounds will just get put on even more with the fried chicken and the waffles and the ribs and everything. So oh, it's man. music, music and food. 
So <laughs> sounds good to me. Nice. I, I'm I'm into yeah. that. You mentioned Walter Trout, and he was he's on your new album, Dream Train. Yep. Yeah, we got. To, I've I've known Walter for uh, a handful of years, and because of the magic of of social media, um, you know, we were friends on Facebook. But you know, I didn't ever think that he was actually looking at my Facebook page or my feed. And so the first time I met him was at a, a show about probably five years ago, and he walked off stage and and came up to me and goes, "Hey, you're Alistair Green. You play guitar for Alan Parsons." And I was like, "Wow, you're one of my heroes, and you know my name." <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so we became friends, and, and I sat in with his band um, a couple times, and then when it came time to make the record, you know, we really wanted to make this a special record, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons. I, I recently left the Alan Parsons uh, mm. project, and I'm focusing on my solo career, and we really wanted to kind of come out of the gate strong um, with a new release, so I, I kind of called in, you know, some favors and had some special guests uh, on the new album, so Walter is you know, one of my heroes from, you know, going back 20 years or so. And so to have him on the album, you know, regardless of whether I sell 10 copies or 10 million copies, just having him on a song, you know, means the world to me. So we're we're really pleased about that. That's awesome. I want everyone to know your website, alistairgreen.com. And that's Alistair with an A-L-A-S-T-A-I-R. Green with an E on the end, because like that's Thank what he wants. Thank you for doing that. Well, you know that's not it's not an easy one, so I appreciate you spelling that out. I had to retype a lot of things, a lot of places. Let me just tell you, I got my practice in. Because it was like, yeah. it, I'm like, does he wear a kilt or not? That and I think you wear cool. a kilt. Right, exactly. Is he going to call? Is he going to call in and have a weird Scottish accent, or what's going to happen? Here, so. <laughs> yeah, because it is very, very United Kingdom, actually. Yes. Yeah. Are you, well, there's very. Do you have a United spelling. Kingdom? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's actually it's the, it's it's the it's the Scottish spelling, really. Um, oh. Uh, yeah. So there's different spellings, and I have the Scottish one. So what's and I'm in not your Scottish. foreign? Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's in my what? Your sport of that. Your sport. <laughs> okay, so everyone, AlistairGreen.com. We're going to play Dream Chain in a second here. But I also want to, you know, Richard Blitz, number one, again, great name. But the other thing, you know, talking about playing with some greats, you you recently opened for Leon Russell, right? Uh, yes, we were lucky enough to do that. And oddly enough, speaking of Walter Trout, we're going to be uh, playing with him here in San Diego on the 18th of March, Sunday night, 18th of March, Blitz Brothers opening for Walter Trout. And uh, cool. we, we were lucky enough to play with him here at a place called Humphreys. And uh, yeah. and uh, so it's a, it's a Walter Trout morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, right. yeah. toast to Walter Trout. Today yeah. that's Friday, and we can do that here. <laughs> we're, we're just happy to have him, happy to have him still on the planet, tell you the truth. After right. some health problems he, he's gone through. So we're very grateful for that. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Now, one thing I, I wanted to just touch on, too, Rob, uh, so you've got Alistair as a headliner. I know the McCoy brothers are, are playing, too, but you've also got Len Rainey playing and the Midnight Players. And so this is you've got a little bit of a San Diego push happening into Yuma. Yeah, yep, and it's time to, to cross the river and uh, <laughs> take over one more time. <laughs> and then we got, we got Ben Robinson. He, he's coming all the way from North Carolina. And we met him, <clears throat> excuse me, when he was like 17, and mm. uh, phenomenal guitar player as as a young mm-hmm. guy was on uh, the Tonight Show, and um, when he was like 13, it was crazy. And uh, he's got his own band called uh, Preacher Stone, and they're out of mm-hmm. Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm wondering why he's not calling in, but uh, he's going to be there with us as well. So. Right on. Yeah, well, he was on our show when you guys did uh, the Blues Bash and Julian last year. So that's right. Yeah, I remember him calling in for that, and I remember like his music is incredible. He is a, a great talent, and and Len Rainey too, uh, the Midnight Players, because they're going to be playing with Johnny Vernazza. And uh, Nancy and I, we've seen Johnny play too. Yeah, and that's he's, that's some badass guitar amazing. work, you know. Well, he, really he played with uh, Elvin Bishop for quite a quite a long time, and. Uh, yeah, he's great, and Walter Gentry is coming with him as well on saxophone, and they are just a really fun band. They just get right into the audience. The audience gets into them. They're they're really fun. They get funky, and uh, so yeah, it, it's it's going to be a real nice mix this year. I think you know, really good. Yeah, 
I'm Good excited job. about that. Well, let's play some music because I want people to hear, like, if you have not heard Alistair Green, like, dudes, seriously, I mean, he wears a kilt, <laughs> whether he <laughs> right. does or not. That's he part, does now. Part of my, that's be, no, well, the next, the next record, we'll, 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 we'll do the cover with the all kilts on, so. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I think there's something <laughs> about Scottish music. You know, I don't know if, Do you know the Wicked Tinkers? Have you heard of them? Um, they, I have not. They, they play out of San Diego all the time at the San Diego Scottish Highland Games, but they're some they're they're and crazy. They, they wear kilts with no underwear and they twirl. Yeah, and we all have no problem <laughs> with that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but anyway, that's how you're supposed this, to wear them. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, there's this drive in there, and I and I think that there's something incredibly tribal about the Scots, and it's like you know Braveheart, like yeah. So I wonder about that, Alistair, with you. I mean, when people hear Drive well, I'm actually, Dream well, I, it, it, te- Technically, I'm actually not Scottish. I think my parents were just high when they were going to the, the name book. So, uh, you know, I, I, I can <laughs> pretend nice. that I am, but, 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 uh, I'm, uh, but I, 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 to my knowledge, and I haven't done Either that yet, or he won't I'm admit not, it. I'm not, yeah, I'm not Scottish, so. He doesn't it's want to a, wear a kilt. And he doesn't want to show yeah, what's in his foreign it. either. Yeah. So, exactly. <laughs> by the way, everybody, if you type in sporin on the on the Internet, make sure you get the correct spelling. Yes. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you right now, so everybody's going to run and do it right now, I know. Um, anyway, Dream Train, this is the title track. Tell us Some about the map, please. <laughs> For and do. Um, uh oh. Dream Train, tell us about this being the title track uh, of the album and the guitar work on this is just like, it is it's it is like a train and it just keeps coming and it's like electric and it's, ooh, it's yummy. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it, that was actually the, the song that has come, came the easiest to me as far as writing it. Um, I've got a recording software at home and I, you know, was demoing songs and working on ideas and literally the song kind of wrote itself in about four minutes. And then, uh, lyrics are usually the thing that's the toughest for me to kind of come up with good lyrics. And it's kind of a proclamation. It's kind of a stating for me, I mean, you know, everyone can have their own meaning for whatever songs that they like or whatever. But for me, it's really just kind of stating about what it is that I feel like I'm supposed to do with my life which is play guitar and make music. And that's sort of what the, uh, the song is about for me. And, uh, you know, it came out in such a way that I was like, well, that's got to start the album and that's going to be the title track. It was just very apparent that that was the song that was going to kind of lead the charge into this mm-hmm. next phase of my life. And uh, I'm really proud of it. So there you go. Right on, right on. So everybody, here it is, Dream Train, brand new album out now, and uh, and and it can get it on iTunes and places like that. Absolutely, you can get it on iTunes, Amazon, all that good stuff. Okay, take awesome. a listen, everyone. <laughs> Last 
it was badass. Party. I know, man. That was Dream <laughs> yeah. Train, everybody. Uh, with the Alistair you got to love. Band. Oh. You got to love Alistair's slide guitar. He's a no smoker. Man. Well. man. Love well, it, Alistair, dude. You... No, I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I, what Rob was saying. I mean, I fell in love with slide guitar a long time ago, and, and uh, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where if I have an opportunity to uh, to do it oh. in, a, in, a, in a situation yeah. like that, I just, I, I just love the sound of it. It's just a different – it's different. I mean, I love wiggling my fingers as much as everybody else does playing regular guitar, but uh, playing slide is just a lot of fun, and it's, it's, uh, it's a big challenge, so – it, it takes a certain talent, okay. buddy. <laughs> but it's it not a like a heavy. There's, there's a sexiness to slide guitar. There's like a deep. It's not oh, yeah. like you know, there's, oh, sexy woo woo. It's like let's get it on. Yeah, like, you're, you're, you're going. going right. You're going That's down. It. Well, no, like, <laughs> part of the there's no time to Part sing. of the thing with the slide, with the uh, with the, you know the old blues recordings and stuff. The slide, you know, it really is kind of, especially on an acoustic guitar is the closest thing to a human voice in a lot of ways mm-hmm. because you're mm-hmm. not playing on the frets. You're above the frets kind of sliding around on the notes, where which is similar to vocals. So you can kind of do some things on slide that are, you know, phrasing-wise is going to be closer to what, you know, the human voice is. And so that I think that's probably why it's, it, it sounds kind of as ex- expressive as it does. And if, and if you choose to think that it's sexy, then I can't help that. But... Uh, <laughs> But, There's but nothing yeah, wrong no, with that. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a. How dare you? I love it because of that. It's very expressive. Let's, it's a very expressive thing. So. Well, all I know is you either need to, you know, boogie. There, like I can see women doing the squat dance. Absolutely. Or like if you're sitting down, you need to really just like sit and you're like, like, like <laughs> going over. Enjoy it. Yeah, grids. when you go over cattle grids, going through turbulence on an airplane, like it can feel good. I'm just saying. But um, I can't believe we've already got to this part of the show. <laughs> but, wow. But you know, Alice well, that with dr- yeah. the dream train part, like the 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 slide and and there's this. Um, and then, and when you're, whenever there's any kind of blues slide, and it's got to do with trains and that drive, driving, you know, there's this deepness, there's this, you know, just pure rocking of it. But there's also this haunting element to it, you know, like the ghost train kind of vibe. And there's, and you have that, mm-hmm. like kind of Johnny Winters has that kind of. There's these. Yeah, well, I, he's a huge, he's a huge hero of mine, and, and a huge influence. And, I, and and as far as slide guitar playing. You know, he was definitely one of the guys that that learned from, you know, the masters, and then kind of did his own thing with it, and and you know, created. He's one of the founders of blues rock. I mean, if you want to, you know, define a genre and who the founding fathers of that genre are, if blues rock mm-hmm. is indeed a genre, then Johnny Winter is definitely, uh, mm-hmm. you know, sitting at the sitting at the head table as far as guys that that pioneered mm-hmm. that and and took the influence of the blues and combined it with rock and cranked up their amps and, uh, and did the thing. So yeah, he's a huge, huge influence on, on my playing and my songwriting and everything. So, yeah. Right on, right on. Tell cool. us about your band. I, I know I'm, I'm trying to get everything in before you, you have to go, but uh, tell us about your band because I always want to make sure people know who the entire band is. It's always so important. Well, on the record, uh, Austin Beatty is the drummer, and he's been playing with my band five or six years, I want to say. And Jim Rankin is the bass player who's been in the band 10 years. Uh, You know, with everybody's busy schedules, uh, as a band leader, you have to sometimes adapt and get other people and stuff like that. So, you know... If, because I'm not Eric Clapton and I can't pay like a million dollars for a show, sometimes you have to get who's available. So I, I play live with a lot of other different players. Uh, and so right now I'm out here in Memphis with a guy named Sam Boley on bass, who is actually Dick Dale's bass player. Uh, so he's out with me wow. right now in Memphis. And I've got a great, great young guy. drummer named Anthony. Anthony Andrews is playing drums with me out here in Memphis. And then I think for Julian... I'm sorry, not Julian. I'm sorry. I'm getting it all. I'm getting it confused. Already. It's only a two for and a half Yuma. hour drive from Yuma to Julian, so they're yeah. like they're you and know for, uh, there's mountain and for, desert buddies. <laughs> and for Yuma, Sam Sam's going to be playing bass with me in Yuma, and I've got a, a great uh, drummer that's going to be playing named Brian Head, who's played with. And I could just start you know doing the resume list, but another a fantastic drummer. So yeah, I mean it's interesting as a front guy, you have to adapt, and and the show must go on, and 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 you know get people up to speed on your catalog and. I'm very fortunate where I've got 
I've get, gotten to meet a lot of fantastic musicians, and so I have you know a little Rolodex full of guys that are just all just pro level great musicians, and it just makes it makes my life a lot easier. Mm. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I, but, I know. Uh, what, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's travel is hard. I mean, people have families and have projects yeah. and do other studio recordings and stuff. So I can imagine that. And speaking of that, um, Mr. Blitz. Yes. I hear that you do a lot of recording because I was looking at Blitz uh, recordings. Do you get to get blitzed while you're recording or no? <laughs> uh, it's been known to happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been in the recording business for now. It's, this is my 32nd year in business. Wow! Uh, so that's that's my sort of my main. Uh, that's my job. Uh, but I'm, I've always kept my uh, myself out there. I played for many years for a living. You know, every single night for about 14 years, and then uh, started doing the studio work. But kept playing live shows. I, I do it much much less than uh, than these guys do. Uh, I just go out to scare myself occasionally and uh, <laughs> scare my band members out then uh, get nervous <laughs> and see if I can st- still hang. You know, uh, I've, been, I've been at it for a long time. Right on, yes, right on. So, uh, now, so you're in San Diego, and that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear all these San Diego people going over too because San Diego, I just think that has just got an incredible blues music scene. I mean, I remember when we moved there, you know, years ago, I was like, wow, there's like live music, and it's got a lot of blues mm-hmm. and a lot of rock, and of course there's country too, and all the other styles, and reggae and ska and all that. But um, it just seems to me like San Diego, you know, I know a lot of people think of L.A., and Alistair, you're based at, out of L.A. now, right? I'm a little north of L.A. in Ventura, but, oh, nice. uh, you know, pretty pretty soon it's just going to be one big city between San Diego and, and you know, Santa Barbara That's for sure. or San Luis yeah, Obispo. Yeah. So, <laughs> there's, yeah, yeah, it's all going to merge, and then <laughs> California's going to split, you know. And become its own continent. I don't know. I'm just kidding, but um, I don't want to get into that. But, yeah, Ventura area, to me, is an amazing area, too, especially for the arts. It's, it's got a lot of art yeah, going on. Well, yeah, I, I grew up in Santa Barbara, and then uh, my wife and I moved down to Ventura area about 10 years ago and it is nice and and obviously uh recently you know we uh had the fires that went through Mm. and and the flooding and the mudslides and we're waiting for the locusts and the earthquake but um yeah it's I mean it's a beautiful it's a beautiful area but it it has been just in the last month or so I've been going through some pretty pretty tough tragic times but uh you know such is the cost I suppose of of living in such a beautiful place unfortunately Mm. so well, I know. I mean, we went through it in San Diego with the fires and yeah. everything. And, uh, yep. Actually, yep. Yeah, we went through that. It was actually <laughs> – uh, Rob, you know about those ones. <laughs> I don't even want to go back into that. Of, of I don't happened, even want to think about it. We won't be no, going there, no. and you're going to have plenty of sunshine in Yuma because it is the sunniest place on earth. Believe it. It's true, except mm. for on some, some days it decides to rain when it's not supposed to. But I, I wanted to go back yeah. to, to Richard. San Diego really is quite a big blues scene, you know, and, and a good music scene. Well, interestingly enough, uh, Len Rainey, uh, I, I recorded Len Rainey probably 20 years ago wow. <clears throat> and uh, haven't seen him since. I see his name all around town. You know, we're always, everyone's always working, uh, but <clears throat> it'll be nice to see him again. Uh, you, someone yeah. mentioned uh, 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 a, 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 a guy named Gentry who plays with him. Is that Hollis Gentry's brother that, that plays sax with him? Walter Gentry? Uh, I Walter know Gentry, it's, it's you know Walter Walter Gentry. I don't know. It might I wonder be. if he's related to Hollis Gentry. Uh, that well, was my we're first thought. Find out. Uh, the the amazing sax uh, legend from San Diego. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, I, don't know. I have not heard him personally, but I hear a lot of really good things about him as a talent and as a pro. And uh, supposed to be a super funny guy, so it, it should be an interesting stage. Uh, it sounds like a nice lineup. Uh, it's been it's for me. I, I get to see so much talent. That I, I, I'm always, I, I, you know, this is my full time thing. So mm-hmm. every day, a new a new thing comes in, and you know, uh, it's just uh, it's just great. Uh, uh, there's so much diversity and so much music here in San Diego, and everyone mm-hmm. takes it seriously. It's not they're not playing around. They do it, you know, with with. Full on intent, you know. Mm. It, it, I've been to Richard's cool. studio. It's it's incredible. Richard 
is a, is a genius. Uh, <laughs> I went into his studio for the first time, and we spent some time. And I, he, he said, you know, have a seat. And and all of a sudden, all these these flat screens lit up, and uh, he started playing me some cuts of some projects he was working on, and he, he was. He was just working it, man. I want to tell you, yeah, just a phenomenal hand and ear uh, coordination and, and knowing all the electronics and all that stuff. It, I was amazed. I was amazed. I, I know all those little Talk buttons, to you, Richard. <laughs> Everybody, go well, record there. How much? How, how, how much did you? How much did you pay Richard for the for the free advertising? <laughs> See, that's, it. that's a little side deal we have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that's yeah, great, no, man. no. That's great. No, tell us Ladies, about the, I, uh, the Blitz I'm gonna Brothers. Have to get, I'm going to have to get oh, going okay, here, go you ahead, guys. Sorry, you I'm, have to bail. I'm sorry. All right. I apologize uh, if, if I wasn't uh, in the middle of the Keeping the Blues Alive Awards. Uh, I would uh, stay on the phone with you guys all day long and, uh, you know, start drinking whiskey in about a half an hour and join the party. But uh, How did you know we were doing that? Yeah. I just had a feeling. I just had a feeling. <laughs> Um, and I, I apologize for my for my early exit, but uh, it was fantastic being on with you guys, and I'm really looking forward to the festival and seeing everybody and playing, and uh, it's going to be a great time, and getting looking forward to seeing some of the other bands and all that. So uh, very you good. Having, we'll have fun in on. Memphis, man. Travel yeah, safe. yeah, man. Yeah. Stay yeah, warm, you guys. And have some waffles well, yeah. with popcorn today because it's popcorn day. Okay. So all right, go I'm, have some I'm, I'm popcorn. Actually, I'll, I'll do popcorn and waffles. Okay, good. We like that. And, <laughs> All right, and you guys. All right, take All right. care. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, thanks. so much. Bye, Al. Appreciate it. Okay, man. Bye. Talk to you soon, Rob. All right. Bye. Right, bye, bye. Everybody, alistairgreen.com. Give them another shout out. It's A L A S T A I R. Green with an E on the end. Uh, just proving that I really am not drinking whiskey. <laughs> I can spell. So right. there it is. And I can't. Lisa, I can't Lisa. on my head. You know. Go ahead. When I saw when I saw him the first time with the Alan Parsons band, yeah, I, I, I I'm a big fan of the Alan Parsons project and and his writing and uh, the quality musicianship and and he went to some places that not a lot of other musicians went to and uh, you know not to mention all the time in the studio with the Beatles and things like that but anyway when I first saw the Alan Parsons band with Alistair playing. He's, you know, he's had so many different guitar players over the years that mm-hmm. I was like, wow, let's, as one guitar player to another, you're like, okay, let's see if this guy can really pull off that solo. And the solos are so famous. It's like trying to play, a, uh, you know, a, a Pink Floyd solo. Don't, you know, don't try to play it unless you can nail it exactly. And Richard right. knows mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. And I want to tell you, he went through that entire 90 minutes and blew me away. Every guitar solo that Alan Parsons ever recorded or had recorded, he nailed it. And I was so impressed with that. I was blown away. And then it turns out we're backstage and we're talking, we're meeting each other. And he introduced me to Alan. And 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 that's how Alistair and I became friends over the years. And he's just a really fun guy, super, super talented. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm so happy he's got his new record out. And He's, uh, you know, he's on his own now, and he's he's swimming the swim. That's awesome. I think it's really exciting. He, We interviewed Paul Nelson about, what, month, two months ago. Mm-hmm. He was a protege for Johnny Winter, and I was just like, man, I mean, the playing is, is they're, they're there, and, I, and he's often doing his own thing as, as when, ever since uh, Johnny passed, and it's like when you, when you are on these big projects, and then you've got to step on out on your own, you know, it's like a whole different scene, even though you've been in the industry for a while, you know, but yeah. these guys have the talent for it. Like they, I mean, for that kind of, like he can, I mean, Alistair is really good. I mean, he's really, really, really good. And that's what I love about your shows, your talent, every person you've brought on the show, the talent is absolutely phenomenal. And it's, and it's diverse. You're always showcasing your lineup has always got this diversity of the blues, which I think is so important that people understand that blues has all kinds of feelings and it all comes from different people and places and who moved up to Chicago and when and all that kind of thing. And, it, and I think it's so important that you continue doing what you do to keep the blues going and educating and making people need to have a good time. I mean, 
come on, we need a good time. And, and uh, I think there's nothing we better than do. a blues festival on a river, you know? Other than yep, on a mountain. Yeah, I agree. You know, I agree. Fun. There's so much, yeah. so much negativity out there now and all the weird politics and everything. It's just like, okay, let's just forget all that crap for one day and let's all get together, smile, move with the music, and, you know, and have a couple beers. I mean, it doesn't yeah. get any better than that. Yeah. yeah. And along the river and, there. Although, and food trucks. You're going to have food trucks. That's cool. It's like a food yep, truck festival. Yep. <laughs> I think I think it'd be really cool that if somebody would write like a political blues album. Like I, you know, sometimes I think I don't. I'm going to date myself here, but there used to be a program on television called Rawhide, and Frankie Lane would be move him up, head him out, yeah, rawhide. rawhide, and they'll uh-huh. always be all slapping the whips at the cows. That's what I think all the people in the world could get together and take the politicians and the leaders and get those bull whips out. Head them Man, up. are you like to move, move them out? <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. That's you're all crazy. freaking fired. I yeah. know. Next. And Wouldn't that be fun? And you're not allowed to stay on, yeah, on for a long time. But before we get crazy with that, <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Blitz Brothers because I want to play. She caught the Katie. You, I, I mean, you, as soon as you hear that, you just you you want to know, like, did she see the doctor? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old Taj Mahal song. That's where yeah. I got it. And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, lo- I loved that from Taj Mahal first blues record. And uh, yeah. have pl- I played that song over, over and over through the years uh, many times. And it's almost become kind of a signature for me. It's just mm-hmm. like it, it's like a nice pair of comfortable shoes. And, and mm-hmm. oddly enough, uh, again, it's a little bit of slide guitar. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Taj Mahal is still out there plugging away, and oh. and uh, uh, I, I've always loved that song. It's one of my wife's favorite songs. Uh, it's and you guys, you guys did a good uh, with, job on the, this. I love it. Uh, you know, uh, in, in, you mentioned so many people and, uh, uh, through this interview, and I go, wow, now that's odd that they would mention that. Uh, pe- people I've worked with over the years, uh, you were talking about Frankie Lane. I just did an album last year with his musical, di- his, the guy who is his musical <laughs> director for 20 years. Really? And Frankie Lane was a San Diego guy, you oddly know enough. I didn't know that. Yeah, I kid you not. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. It's like Leo Carrillo. Like, you know, I see his name pop up all the time. He's got his own ranch. Is it L.A. or North San Diego? The Leo Carrillo Ranch. I don't know why that came to mind. I just figured <laughs> maybe you'd do something with him, too. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about well, wait a minute. Bayou wait a minute. We've got a, one more Go name. Ahead. One more name we've got to kick out there is a real good friend of Richard's and mine, and his name is Barney Roach. Barney He's been Rock. in the blue. <laughs> Barney has been a cornerstone of the blues community. He used to host a uh, a, a blues uh, night down at Blind Melons, which is now the 710 mm-hmm. Club down at PB. And he kept mm-hmm. that going for, I think, I don't know what, Richard, 10, 12 years or something. Bar- Barney is, is a force. He's an absolute force. He's the bass player, my bass player in the Blitz Brothers, my good friend, and is uh, – Absolutely knows everybody, and everybody loves Barney. He's uh, he's like a hurricane walking in the door. The guy is absolutely an amazing human being, and uh, and he's I can kind of thank him for getting me back out in the Blitz Brothers. He, he talked me back into it and said, "You got to get out there and play some more." And and he's the one who mm. who books all of our shows uh, because well, he's, what about- he's just always out there, you know. What about his amplifier collection, though? Somebody comes in town and needs some off-the-wall, freaking weird-ass amplifier. Oh, it's amazing. Barney goes, yeah. I have one. Yeah. Uh, he he provides the back line for the blues festival here, uh, for, you know, the blues festivals here in town. And wow. uh, is really tied into the belly up, too. Whenever they need an amp, he'll, he'll bring it in. He just drives over and takes it over to them, fixes wow. their broken ones. And, uh, and uh, he cool. has been an amazing uh, force in the music business. Uh, I think he also uh, was the the main guy for the blues uh, 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 guitar, vintage guitar magazine for a long oh, time. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, he, he's and, a and staff was, writer, I believe. 
yeah, uh, uh, he. I, I think he had something to do with Walter Trout when Walter had his his uh, health problems recently that were dire health problems. Uh, yes. Barney had, I believe, had something to do with a, one of those crowdfunding things or something, and GoFundMe uh, yeah. helped the GoFundMe thing and helped c- get a lot of money, which helped Walter, from what I understand, uh, and. Uh, you know, that's the guy, uh, guy he is. Yeah. 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 No, if he's, if he's on your side, you're covered. Uh, <laughs> if, if, if Barney is, is something else and, and a, and a damn good bass player and backup singer yep. for, in my band. Uh, right yep. on. I'm, I'm lucky right, to have him and, and uh, my buddy Calvin Lakin is playing drums. We, we do it strictly three piece and keep it really straightforward and, uh, mm-hmm. And just go out there and hit it. Uh, it feels good listening to it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, and and you know, Barney, I've been him and I have been emailing each other, and I'm like, dude, Barney, you should be on. He's cool. Um, he's, he's he's fun to deal with, you know. And and yeah. with, But can I? I just want to say, if you ever change your band name, I think it's yes. Let's Burn and Roach. <laughs> <laughs> saying, that's cool, pretty good. Or it could be an album not, title. I don't know. Not but bad. I, I just, you I may have missed your calling. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's a you know, and and then um, if you do an album with that, then we've got to put the McCoy brothers on uh, with their with their song, <laughs> "Give Me My Medicine." You know, "Ode to California." <laughs> there you right. go. You know, there yeah. it is. But here it is. Let's play. She caught the Katie because, and I, and I'm glad you covered this. And Taj Mahal is a huge. I'm just a huge, huge Taj Mahal fan. And and Ry Cooter. And it's mm. like, why did you guys have to break up? But then it's like cool, you know, what they do and. You know, but still. Well, now I, like, I, I haven't I have not heard this cut <laughs> since uh, I've never heard the cut. I don't think, but uh, it's, uh, it's a live thing from uh, I think from the Belly Up show. And yeah. Barney found found this cut. He records a lot of stuff of us uh, playing live, and uh, I think we were opening for Leon yeah. Russell at the mm-hmm. Belly Up Tavern here in San Diego. Uh, this has been a few years ago, but uh, we figured this would be a good thing for for the blues show. And, uh, yeah. and and uh, it's different every time we play it. <laughs> well, it's got the vibe. It gives yeah. you the vibe of you guys, and it's and it's and it's just so cool. And the and the vibe and, and, here and is it's just and it's too. also my buddy, my old buddy Jim McGinnis from KGB Radio is uh, is uh, announcing us uh, on the thing. I don't know if that's part of the tape that you guys yeah. are playing, but uh, yeah, uh, he's great. He's great. He's a neighbor yeah. of mine, Jim, and uh, he's a force he's of nature here in San Diego too. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's a good the name, too, you know. You've got Rose, <laughs> right? Lips, McGinnis. This, this yep. is getting yep. really yep. good here. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get real happy on our show. We today. have a trend, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, everybody, here it is. She caught the Katie, again, from the Blitz Brothers. And, you know, where's the best place for people to keep up with the band? Is it uh, Facebook? I, I think you guys were setting up uh, on Facebook. Uh, if, if, you, if you just go anywhere and write in Blitz Brothers on the Internet, uh, it'll, it'll, throw, it'll throw out tons of stuff uh, on it'll YouTube. It'll you out, baby. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just write in the Blitz Brothers. Uh, uh, I, I started this band in about 1973 or 74. Wow. So it's this oh. goes back. Uh, this has been a lifetime of of, uh, of blitzing. <laughs> wow, I know for me it is because like that's my year of birth. You know, not to give my age away, but like that's my Ouch. you know seventy four. Like is a good year for music. She was born yeah. in a blitz. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, I blitzed yeah. right through while Nancy yeah, was that, watching The Exorcist. I came out. Yeah, Dude, yeah, there yeah. It is. keep in mind uh, this, this is before there was Doobie Brothers. Uh, uh, you know, there was this was uh, before that. You know. Right. Oh, well, the good. the Blitz yeah. Brothers owned San Diego for ten years, and uh, they they opened for everybody. They were played at all the the big clubs. That, you know, they're all gone now, unfortunately. But uh, wow. yeah, if if you didn't know about the Blitz Brothers or or you hadn't seen the Blitz Brothers or run into Richard and his his crew, then you you were not. You, you had your you head just, in the You were un, You were living under a rock. Yep, yeah. They were mm-hmm. everywhere. You're shut They owned the town. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still doing right. it now. And and whether you know it or not, because this song she called the Katie is like you said, it's kind of funky and you know, I'll paint my mailbox blue kind of thing. But Richard is a blues shredder, and it's, it's, I, I just want everybody to know that. It. It, this is he, so good. He, he's Go an incredible, incredible guitar player. That's Thank you, Robert. Everybody, she, she played Katie. a song. And then she gave it to someone else. That's right. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jim McInnes. (laughs) Thank you. 
Thank you very much. And I haven't been to the Belly Up in a year. In fact, I think it was a year ago this month. And at that point, I was here for this very same reason, and that is to introduce one of my favorite bands, uh, opening act for Leon Russell tonight. What a great show this is going to be. So uh, let's hear it for these guys who, uh, they're here to kick your ass, if I may use a dirty word like that. Let's hear it for the Blitz Brothers.
recording when they're playing over at the Belly Up Tavern opening for Mr. Leon Russell and they're going to be performing at the fourth annual Yuma Boogie Brews and Blues Festival happening February 17th at Gateway Park right along the Colorado River. It is an awesome location and I think that you've got to play that song Richard because that is like that is like a party song. Like how can anybody <laughs> not party and get up and shake it? You know, that's that is like a get up and that's a squat that, dance. That's a squat dance song. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but I kinda like the sound of it. <laughs> well, no, we learned we learned that from Willie Kellogg, the drummer. Now you gotta know Willie, right, in San Diego. Um he's w- Willie the, Kellogg. Yeah, yeah, the Flying Burrito Brothers, um, Played with Can Heat with Joel Scott Hill, who's oh okay wow, okay awesome. yeah got it got it yeah 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 he, he um we used to play with him and he was like <laughs> okay now watch at this t- at a certain time it's true <laughs> everybody gets down and well especially the women start it there's this, they this start, start that, like, getting down on the ground and then depending on how much you know how liquored up they are they can't get back up can't some can up. some can't <laughs> and it's just where you know everyone <laughs> starts and the fun up. begins. Yeah, yeah it's like down. how low can you go kind of competition, yeah. and the women will start it. Yeah. And then the men are like, oh, man, I'm going to have Damn to it, why did I? Why did I, I dance with I her? Gotta, yeah. 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 I know yeah, we yeah. always talk about this, Rob. I, I know. I'm sorry, but it is. That's a squat dance that's song. That's a squat dance. Your guitar is like wailing, and it's like for three pieces to have that much, like, energy, mm. you know. And, I mean, it's just it, the energy is infectious, and you build it and build it, and then the drums and the bass that dun 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 dun. We do our own Oh my award. God! I feel like like it's a squat dance it's, award. It's like uh, having, you guys it's like are too nice. And epic. Yeah, Rob, you know what I'm. You know I'm. I'm. I'm ready to play squat dance now. You know, so All right. I won't get All back right. up. I'm not like you, Richard, who can do things on your head. You know, and twirl around. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, that was Alistair. Was oh, it Alistair? Alistair was on his head. Head. That was, that was oh. Alistair on his head, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good, th- I, good thing about the kilt, man. I mean, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I would but pay money is... to see that. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of, yeah, talk about squat dances for women. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new album, Squat Dancing and Kilt. Yeah. Now, Richard, have you been to Yuma? Uh, I, I've I've traveled through Yuma. I've I've never actually uh, uh, played there before, uh, mm. uh, th- but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Everyone says it's a beautiful venue. That it's an absolutely fantastic mm-hmm. location. Uh, oh, it is. And uh, I, I spoke with the the guy who's going to be doing the whole sound system and everything. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, he's done it for a few years, I guess, Rob. And uh, yes, uh, uh, um, good old Joe Domingo sound. Spectrum sound Joe it will be, and and he's a sensational sound man. And, it, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was doing the sound for us on that live cut that we just played. Uh, wow! Uh, uh, and uh, he's he's everyone knows him in San Diego, and it's a is a great mixer. Uh, it's it's not enough to just have the big PA and all that stuff. There's it's an art form to to uh, to get stuff working. Oh my God! Uh, yeah. There's so mm-hmm. much involved in it. Uh, Especially outside. And, uh, a few and times. He's, and, he's and gone. Went, okay. <laughs> and now he's gone it, digital, so he can mm. lock down all the sound checks and everything, which is super important. And yeah. uh, and that and now he's flying his bananas, uh, you know. And uh, the, he's flying it, his it makes bananas. It all... What? Whoa! Wait! What? Ow! <laughs> Sorry. It, it got into it's, a weird area cold. there, didn't we? Yeah, it's well, called, we went from it's squat called, dancing and kilts and line twirling. It's on called head line, to... line array speakers. When you yeah. on the side of the stage, instead of piling a whole 
crap load of speakers on top of each other. You take now that the speakers can can actually produce the same sound, but they're a third the size. So oh. the, you, you hang them, you hook them together, and you hang them from your your struts of your stage, and it makes a whole <laughs> different sound because mm. the way the, the the music is coming down at you, but it's moving like over your head instead of this big wow. huge blast of music that just hits you in the face. And after a while, that's too much. And mm. when you hang the bananas. The line array speakers, it's a whole different sound, and Joe, uh, Joe's got that in his system now. So it's a way upgrade in, in our sound system. Well, if you're going to upgrade, you need bananas. So the, the, yeah. the flying the bananas wall of sound is in the past. It's the, yeah, the, the, the wall, wall of, of sound. sound. <laughs> Neil Young's not going to be there. Yeah. Well, I've I've been out in the audience before, and I'm out, you know, meeting people and saying hi and stuff, mm-hmm. and I walk past the PA system, and it's just like blows my head Boom. off my shoulders yeah. and i'm like there's got to yeah. be a better way so now we have that and it it's it's way better well, i want to cool. ask you rob what got you and i know we've asked this before but i want people to understand this because it's 20 years julian blues bash uh up in the mountains of san diego again it's like two and a half hours from yuma or an hour and a half actually really close and um so the 20th annual one's happening Saturday, June 16th. So that's 20 years. Yeah. You've got the four years in Yuma. And I know putting on a festival is difficult. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The weather may be, you know, a, a brat, a banana in the sky that decides to explode on you or um, anything can go wrong. And at the same time, you're you're keeping, like, an event. You're getting musicians together, the audience. So you have to work with all these different people what possessed you to do this? And I mean it in a good way, like really, because you have to be possessed to continue to do it because it's such hard work. I know it, it is. It can be risky. It, it can be risky. Rob knows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Last year it rained. And we mm-hmm. rented every single circus tent we could get in the Imperial Valley, and we put them up in 40-mile-an-hour winds. And it didn't rain mm-hmm. super hard, but it rained, and we had to cancel the big, huge stage and everything. But the show went on. We played underneath the tent, pushing brooms up to get the water off the tent and stuff. It was crazy. But, oh, wow. You know, it, it, there was, mm. it, you know, maybe 300 people there, and they were all wrapped in sleep bags and stuff like that underneath these tents. And it's one of those concerts that you're never going to forget because do you remember the time we went to the thing and it was cold and rainy and we wrapped in sleep bags, but those guys blew our minds? You know, right. but yeah. it, we had Philip Sace there, we had Jonathan Boogie Long there. You know, mm. uh, um, we had Bosco France there. Mm. Uh, we had Gino Matteo there. All f- fantastic, Amazing. freaking crazy guitar players, and they played like it was Madison Square Garden. You know, wow. well, and Philip so, Sace is is, uh, is phenomenal. He's God, yeah. that guy's just absolutely something. Uh, oh my God, mm. and he's so nice. He is just yeah, a really good guy. He told us to take all the food and all the drink and everything that was on his rider. Out of the out of the motor home and put it in the hospitality tent and share it with everybody. Oh, yeah. and they well, have to I put mean, these well, riders out, right? They have to stay. Yeah. They have to. Isn't there like a, you know? I mean, it's there. I remember reading an article years Richard ago. Richard has one. Did, I just got it in the mail the other day, and I got to get working on it for the Bliss Brothers. It's, Richard, it's what's on? I want to know. Come on. It's the green M and M's. What do the Bliss Boys want? The only uh, the uh, only green M and M's, and they want their amps to go to eleven. The amps have to go to 11. And, and, and there's a number of other things that we won't mention. Yes. Oh, yippee. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to come out. I don't want to come but out. I'll have, them there I'll have the ladies there waiting for you in the motorhome. Oh, I didn't Hey, that. hey. I, I'm a happily married man. <laughs> uh, no, we're not I've going heard. That and way. that's, oh, that's a wonderful a thing. Dance. That's all we do. Yes. We do harmless. We're harmless. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we can't get up back once we start squatting, we really are one of the ones who can't we can't, we can't get, get back, back up. up. No, we Uh-oh. can't. I, no, I think can't. you ought to invent, girls, girls. You ought to invent the squat spring, and it's this little <laughs> thing that you oh you wear behind you, <laughs> and when you start to go down, it pops out and it pops you right back up. That you never hit the ground. Cool. What a fun dance that I would know. Be. Could you imagine? It's the squatting spring. <laughs> I saw that on a Roadrunner cartoon when I was a little kid. <laughs> Acme. You just call it the Meat Me. It was Acme. It was the Acme Squat Spring. Yeah. 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 So 
the, it, it threw him off the cliff, I think. I'm squatting and I can't get up. I know. I could just see the girls with that, and they'd end up in the river. Yeah, they also had the... Go ahead. Uh, they, uh, they they were also the maker of the the finest rocket skates available. Uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> pogo stick. Yeah. Oh, the, everybody right, needs right. a pogo stick. Do you see that kind of thing when when you do these festivals, Rob? I mean, it, you're on the beach. I mean, basically you're at the beach. Oh yeah. On the Colorado oh, River, yeah. right in Yuma. So don't you think yeah. it's kind oh. of? Um, I know what the squat dance is. Yeah, oh, but do you yeah. see people like paddling in the river, and do people skate around and jump on pogo sticks and things at the festival? You know, th- this one was pretty laid back, but you know, I've I've been to ones where this this guy, he comes and he's he's probably almost seven foot tall. He's got a beard and really long hair. He looks like kind of like a bear, and he wears <laughs> a barrel. He has a wooden barrel with straps on it that hold it on his shoulders. Thank God. Big huge, big huge, yeah, big huge work boots, and he comes to these festivals and and the guy's In a is a nut job, you know. Really? But, no, most of our. Most of our people are are pretty laid back, and uh, you know. Oh man! It's well, I want to I want to play one of the tracks from Len Rainey. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it on the show with us today. But Len Rainey and the Midnight Players, you both know him, right? You can catch mm-hmm. up with yeah. him on Reverb Nation. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to play this, and this will be a little different. Um, mm-hmm. it, well, I I love his music. I've been going through it. I'm like, man, this stuff is good. You guys really, you get some good, good musicians. And I know, again, we said Johnny Vernazzo is going to be there, Walter Gentry. And Johnny Vernazzo, it was the Calico, Calico Ghost Town in Yermo, right outside Barstow. With the Bayou Brothers. The Bayou Brothers used to, I don't know if they still do this, on Thanksgiving they used to perform there in this state park, and it looks like a little western town. Okay, we're back it's to really Rawhide. Fun. you know. Yeah. And anyway, so I remember we were camping out there and going to see them play, and that's when we met Johnny. And mm-hmm. I mean, he can wail. He's really good. He's really good. He's oh, really, yeah. really good. And he's um, very I was tasteful. Like, wow. You know, and here we are, like in a fog, you know, literally at this, you know, after camping out overnight, and all of a sudden, like, wake up, Calico Ghost Town. After you go, they have this little train that goes around the little old school mining camp. And as you're going, they start talking about kids dying from typhoid. So you're going on this train, and then all of a sudden you hear, and then the kids died of typhoid. <laughs> and, I mean, we went from that to, like, that in the Bayou Brothers. Who You've had at your different shows as well. They, they rock. I mean, they're, they're awesome, oh, yeah. the Bayou Brothers. Mm-hmm. Now, do you know them, really too? Really good guys. Richard, do you know them? I thought yeah, I could. Just uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, they, they, they're, uh, they're uh, definitely one of San Diego's most popular bands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Cajun yeah, and yeah. all that good stuff. But here it is, yeah. Len Rainey. I wanted to play Neon Moon because it's got some country styling in there, and it's kind of got like a country beachy vibe to it. You know, it feels good. Let's so, hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah, everybody, Neon right. Moon, enjoy, and so you can get another taste of what goodness is coming to Yuma on February 14th. Do I have any country fans in the house? If you like country music, say hell yeah. You don't mind if I play a little country music, do you? I'm going to do it anyhow, Dave. If you like country music, say hell yeah. When the sun goes down in my side of town, a lonesome feeling comes to my door and a whole world turns blue. There's a rundown bar across the railroad track. I got a table for two away in the back where I sit alone. Think I'm losing you. I spend most every night beneath the light of a neon moon. Now, if you lose your one and only, there's always room here for the lonely to watch your broken dreams dance in and out of the Yeah. 
young lovers running wild and free. I close my eyes and sometimes see you in the shadows of the smoke-filled room. No telling how many lies that I've lied and how many tears that I cried telling my poor heart she'll come back someday. I spend most every night beneath the light of a neon moon. Now if you lose your one and only, there's always room here for the lonely to watch your broken dreams and Get on the guitar, get my hand, Mr. Johnny Bernard. My country song. If you like my country song, you gotta say hell yeah. Jukebox plays on, drink by drink, and every word, every sad song seems to say what I think. Telling my poor heart, she'll come back someday. Every night beneath the light of a neon moon. Now, if you lose your one and only, there's always room here for the lonely to watch your broken dreams dancing out of the beams of a neon moon. To watch your broken dreams dancing out of the beams. 
Country Blues, everyone, from Len Rainey and the Midnight Players. They're going to be performing live at the fourth annual Yuma Boogie Brews and Blues Festival happening February 17th. And you can still say it. I can still say it. And I'm excited to say that, you know, Len Rainey has the most amazing timing. He knows when his music's being played, and he calls in right on time for that. Len, welcome to the show. How are you? <laughs> How are you guys? I'm sorry I missed you this early. I was on the road, so um, I blanked out. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry. No, but you got here right as we're playing your music. You missed us talking about you. We've got Richard Blitz here, and, and you can't trust him because he tells everything. And Rob yeah. Bowers, you know, he's the blues moose, and so you never know what he's going to say either. So um, all <laughs> we did was talk a lot about you and Johnny Vanessa and also um, Walter Gentry. Dance. Yeah, and, and we talked about squat dancing. And that song <laughs> means, I think Neon Moon is when, that's post-squat dance. The women have now gotten up, and um, they're they're hugging the ones that they are hoping to go, you know, home with. Home with. So I'm just saying. <laughs> River romance song. <laughs> River romance. That's a that's a pretty that's a pretty song by uh, Brooks and Dunn, though. That's a very pretty song. It yeah. is a pretty so, song. That, yeah. That's... Now was Walter playing on that? No, Wal- yeah, Walter's uh, the the sax player. Uh, he's mm-hmm. known for he's he's one of those guys that can hold a note for. Eternity, oh. you know, he can. He has that internal breathing, that that recycling breathing, so he can hold a note like longer than Kenny G, I think. You know, that so. is very, very enticing to women. Oh God, yeah. here she goes. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Squat dancing. How long can you notes, hold your breath? Anything else that we're talking? Bananas in the sky. Um, we're doing good. Kilts. <laughs> this, this show has gone in the gutter, man. I swear. <laughs> oh, but glad you could join us, Rob. How how long have you known Len? Oh, probably fifteen or so years. Mm-hmm. At least fifteen, Len, twenty years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Len, it, it, his, the way he sings, the, he's got such a sultry voice. And you know he's he's the bass man. Uh, he really you know when when you when you're listening to his band, you know it something about the bass just hits you. I mean he's he's got that in the pocket rock solid bass on everything he does, and it makes the band. And you know, and singing voice, and yeah. singing and playing bass is like uh, rubbing your stomach oh and patting your head too. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, not not everyone can do a counter bass no. line like what he's playing on that, mm. and and then just sing a romantic song. You know, uh, it's, uh, it takes yeah. incredible Amazing. coordination. Oh, I think, <laughs> you have I think to be in the groove. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's definitely something yeah. I've been doing for a long time. I, um, but these guys behind me, though, like with Johnny Vernazzi, you know, because Johnny's a uh, Grammy-winning uh, guitar player with Alvin Bush, Bishop. Mm-hmm. And, uh, right. He, we talked about that. To, yeah, he used to play with uh, Alvin Bishop with uh, Fooling Around and Fell in Love. And uh, but the guys I have behind me now, they, they're some extraordinary guys. They're some good musicians, you know. So they they, mm-hmm. they allow me to just kind of mess around and do what I want to do now. <laughs> Well, I think you're the consummate showman, my friend. And uh, the last time I got down to Patrick's, you had the audience eating out of your hand. You guys were funky and funny, and everyone was having a blast. And oh, you're going to translate that, you know, to a bunch of people over in Arizona. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. we're looking forward. To, we're looking forward to having some fun over there. It's going to be some fun. I'm bringing the whole all the guys, Walter, and everybody. So we're going to have some fun. You know, that's going to be oh, great. Yeah. Now, have you been to Yuma, Arizona before, Len? You know, I, I have been there to play it at a club there. I can't remember. Was it the top of the crest used to be there? Oh, yeah, the crest. Um, there was a, yeah, it's haunted there, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently. Yeah, it's, it's downtown. Spirits. Yeah, it's downtown. Um, right. Yeah, it's not far from where you guys are going to be playing. That's what's so oh. neat about where, I mean, when I say, like, literally downtown Yuma is going to rock, you, you've got the historic downtown, and you take a few steps, and you're at the river. And this whole oh. area is like this beautiful, you know, parkway. You can stroll. Mm-hmm. You can go bird watching. You know, 
or you can see squatting birds. You can see ducks <laughs> floating. People could be tubing down the Colorado River. It's the lower oh, banks of the Colorado River. Is. I mean, this is where people crossed over uh, ancient times and, uh, you know, Native wow. Americans crossing over back and forth. It's it's interesting. Oh. You you cross over, mm-hmm. you could end up in California. You could end up on the Kashan Reservation. So it's an oh. interesting thing about you there, know, being. There is, and then there's Mexico, there is one, There's mm-hmm. one little spot on the concert site and it's this little sandy thing and it's actually mm-hmm. California. It's you know a twenty by twenty spot and it's actually California but it's sitting on the other side of the river. And yeah, you know, it's kinda of funny that way. Yeah. There's a we, casino. We a... There's a oh, casino right. nearby where yeah. if you're in oh, this yeah. room you're gambling in I'll Arizona and you go to the other room you're gambling in California. Yeah, and they'll give yeah. you your tickets different because you can't take your ticket from one place to the I other know, because, because of you're... taxes. Yeah. Uh, change. That's so and funny. can I just say you win more in Arizona than you do in California? So oh, but it's true. How do you know? Because <laughs> I play both sides. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to see if she'd say that. <laughs> that's so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> I think last time I was in Yuma, though, I did play the Topic Crest, and then I, you know, always kind of drove through, but I never really have played. This is going to be fun at, at, the, at the Blues Fest, though, because Rob puts on a good Blues Fest, and he's been putting it on for a while, so he's probably got it down by now. Yeah, so. Well, one of the one of the most fun things is when you're on stage, you've got the Hilton up on the hill there, and the the audience can't really hear it, I don't think, as much as you can hear it from the stage, but if you hit a really nice heavy chord... It that mm-hmm. sound just goes right down that river valley and it hits the hotel and comes back. So you get this like natural delay sound and it is the cool. coolest feeling wow. that you can ever have as a performer. You go wham and then you just bam come back at you. It's kind of really it cool. Back. back from the Hilton. Oh, so are you gonna have the All Star <laughs> Jam at the end? Like so, like that's oh, gonna, yeah. like you're gonna make oh, the yeah. whole. I mean, you've got the prison on the hill. Like I, I, you know, this sounds terrible, but I mean, if they still historic had the historic prison, the historic prison on the hill, even yeah. though they still get called for real prisoners, <laughs> but could you imagine if they had prisoners in there? They'd be like, "Thank God, we have Yay. the blues!" You know, <laughs> <laughs> the music up there. You know, you'd be yeah, those... cups and you'd be doing like some Johnny Cashness over there. You know, yeah. <laughs> it'd be really cool. But um, is there going to be the All Star Jam at the end, and so you can really like make the whole city like quiver a little bit? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Cool. Yes, 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 yes. Well, uh, all all of us will be up on that stage, uh, all the major players and yeah, we'll do two or three songs at the end all together and we kind of just you know, we just say how about this song and and this key and bam off we go mm-hmm. and start trading licks and stuff. It's that, to me that's the most fun. And well, that's my pay. To, you you have to come up with the squat dance. Mhm. And so that it becomes a real song. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that, that shouldn't be a problem because Len is such a funky bass player uh, that it, it, I know he knows exactly what to play yeah. to get you what? squatting. Oh, squatting. I don't know. That sounds kind of, uh, I don't know. That sounds mysterious. <laughs> Yeah, you just well, yeah, just leave it at that. Well, it's, it's, it, it does, like as Nancy says later, it, it ends up with I've fallen and I can't get up, or I've squatted and I can't get up, and um, that's oh. really what happens. It's the, you know, at a certain time of night, it's a in a, in a concert, like you'll see all of a sudden, it's like after people have had a couple beers in, and then all of a sudden it's like women just go crazy and they the start doing the squat started. dance, and the, it's the and women. Let we me become just, ducks. You know, they, this is the squat dance. You you get your you stick your butt out. You stick your butt out, and your elbows go out with your butt. Yeah, it happens. That's a natural and then thing. Duck. You're like swaying from side to side to and the rhythm, then, and you're slowly going down, going down, down, and down. The further down. down you go, the <laughs> further out <laughs> your butt goes, until you get That's to the point where the butt is, outweighs the rest of you, and you fall. <laughs> yeah, you could go. You could either land on your butt, or you could go face first. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a neon moon song there for sure. <laughs> I know, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. There's some of that, you know, that's where you're or you're holding on to somebody <laughs> tightly, yep. you know. But okay, so you guys before you go, because this is gonna be such a cool festival, um, we've definitely gotta play some McCoy brothers, right? So who's in the McCoy brothers band? You gotta you gotta give them a shout out. I was watching some of your YouTube videos and you got a lot more like on there and everyone's gotta look them up. McCoy Brother band, um they're up on uh Facebook as well. 
And for yep. Len Rainey and the Midnight uh, Players, go to Reverb Nation, and you can watch videos there, and you can listen to music, and mm-hmm. it's cool. Connect with them and see what's playing, where they're, where they're playing. Um, but yeah, when you th- when you look at the McCoy brothers, everyone's got to know because you opened the show. It's kind of tradition. Yep, and it it's been a wonderful vehicle for and motivator for for our guys, and we do ninety nine percent all original material. It's got a little mm. southern uh, twang to it so, most of the time. The one that I, I, are you guys playing um, the medicine song? Oh, we have to. I mean, California okay. is legal. We have to. <laughs> well, it is legal. Yay! <laughs> Yay, California! Yeah, I feel the squat. Well, coming. that song is, is is really out of the box as far as the McCoy brothers are concerned, because um, we're really a southern rock band uh, that is blues based. So, um, with uh, with harmonies, we love our harmonies, and so yeah, that's you guys what we're about. Mm. Well, you got so yeah, love we're and finally you. got. So I mean, we can play the other the, two. If you want. <laughs> Which one? You, Whichever one there. you want to play, ladies, that's fine with okay. me. Okay. Okay. And I, before you do that, I just want to thank everybody for coming on the radio today. And uh, looking forward to jamming with everybody and, and having a, uh, you know, a toddy or two with everybody. And uh, Thanks, Rob. We'll be, we're headed out there. You know, I'll be there a few days early. And everybody's hotel rooms are all squared away, guys. And uh, any questions, you all know how to get a hold of me. And uh, I just wanted to say... 1-800-BLUES-MOOSE. <laughs> I am... Once we get past this particular festival, I get to move on to my 20th annual. And awesome. I can't believe... I don't know where those years have gone. And we have had so many good times up in Julian and mm. so many outstanding performers. Uh, and sometimes people never even heard of him. Like, you know, a lot of people never heard of Philip Sace when he w- was with us uh, last year. And uh, so wow. it's been a, it's it's been almost like a family reunion more than a festival because so many people have come so many years in a row and they, they, mm-hmm. they see the folks that they've seen over the years and they want to sit next to them and all that kind of stuff. And they have the faith in me that I'm going to bring uh, the best I can find. And, uh, We've never been corporate sponsored, so I have to thank my family so much uh, for, you know, getting behind me and manning all the stations and things like that. Also, the city of Yuma, love them. They are fantastic to work with. And uh, the marketing director that I've worked with for the last bunch of years, uh, Miriam Lamone, uh, is leaving. She's leaving her position and going to work for... um, a new company. So we want to wish her the best of luck. And she has just been a wonderful partner and my liaison back to the city. So I want to wish her all the best and Mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to Julian. Now listen to this ladies. Mm -hmm. We're going to have so far we've got from Oregon, this fellow named Billy D and the hoodoos. And they've done I'm down. (laughs) Oh, this guy. (laughs) His CD sat in my studio for like a month, and I finally, I said, "Oh, I got to, I got to put this in the, in the, into the machine," and it blew me away. And I get a lot of CDs every year, and yeah. I called him up uh, in Oregon. He and we talked for like an hour, and uh, he's played the Big Blues Bender in Vegas, the Waterfront Blues Festival in Portland, the Chicago cool. Blues Festival. This guy is really fun. Then we got, mm. I. I met this guy named Simon Kenny Lewis. He's a guitar player from Melbourne, Australia, and oh. he is an incredible player. And so he's going to get some dates in L.A. and be able to come to Julian. Um, then we've got this guy named Chris Kane, who is an incredible guitar player. He's amazing. Yeah, he's absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. I've heard of him. Yeah. So he's going to be up in Julian this year. And I got a couple other little things up my sleeve, you know, for the 20th anniversary. And I'm really proud of that. And I just want to thank everybody, all my blues heads and everybody that have supported us over the years. And uh, we'll see what the future holds. Um, I'm a songwriter. I'm a player. Um, there are times when I, I'm i trying to wear two hats at the same time. It's very difficult. And so I'm going to have to grow up and, decide which of the hats I'm going to wear. 
to um, move forward with the rest no, of my life. You get, you to, get do to do both. You can do both. Can do I mean, both. if you can squat and then get back up, you're okay. Yeah. If yeah. you can do that. Somebody else has to help yeah. you. Yeah. I, I, We're not letting you quit. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Rob Dash Bowers. No, no. I'm Bowers. I'm putting an S on that. Rob Dash Bower Presents dot com is the website for all of all of the festivals, and it's Rob with two Bs because he is special. He's a he's a special dude, cool dude. And yeah. I want to. I have an announcement. And moose don't. And quit. this this is this is all because of you, Blues Moose. May 18th, Big Blend Radio Barbecue Blues. And Brews Festival, radio festival, three-hour festival dedicated to the blues so that we can celebrate your 20th anniversary, so you better be on the show. And Mr. Richard Blitz, Mr. Len Rainey, we'd love to have you on the show as well to come and join us for some barbecue, some blues, and some blues music and brews. And some big time squatting. And, yeah, (laughs) and we'll have a squat contest, squat dance contest. um, and what about you know, Priscilla? We got to have Priscilla. Priscilla, our little pink sock monkey. She's um, <laughs> she's going to manage your little banana things up in the sky that you have that right. are playing with the sound. But I, I have to say what happened to Priscilla. We have a friend who sent us a mason jar that had no moonshine in it because you can't. We found out ship moonshine. Well, from the illegal <laughs> distilleries anyway. Yeah, so there was from no moonshine, but there was plenty of fumes. And she put her head in the jar, and she hasn't come out. <laughs> No. <laughs> and Those <laughs> darn sock monkeys. I know. But all I can tell you is the shine. I and I but would that's say where you found out that she actually has two smiles, one bigger than the other. Yeah, she bends over. <laughs> anyway, she's yeah. Anyway, so anyhow, I'll put that up on Facebook somewhere. But all I can say is Richard Blitz. Your last name goes with the shine, the moonshine. There's got to be some kind of connection there, you know. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> Thank you, Nancy and, and Lisa. <laughs> Thank you guys all for joining us. It has been a pleasure meeting you and having Alistair back on the show. I want to give out your websites. Alistair Green, everybody, Alistair is with A-L-A-S-T-A-I-R, Alistair Green with an E on the end. And uh, sometimes he may be wearing a kilt, sometimes not. Uh, but go get his new album. It is incredible. Dream Train. Go get it. Go get it. Um, also, over in San Diego, Richard Blitz, um, Google the Blitz Brothers. Or Brit Blitz Blitz Brit, Brit, I can say it. I swear I'm not drinking whiskey. Um, but if you're going to record anything in San Diego, apparently, like That's this the is place the place to go. to go. So go to BlitzRecording.com. And yes, also thank for you Lynn, for that. Yeah, I mean, really, I think it's such. We need recording people like to be doing the job that you're doing. That this making sure it goes out there well. It's like publishers and and I getting love my good. Job quality content out there, good music that we can all just sit back and, and dig. So I appreciate talk that. Talk about There's... wearing talk about wearing two hats, right, Richard? Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's all part of the same painting for me. Uh it's just uh, you know, painting with sound. Mm. Mm, exactly, and I want to yeah. like that. I like that. It is. It is because it is. It, yep. Uh huh. See, it, it is legal yep. in California. Um, yeah. so, I want to give a shout out to Barney because, like, you've been fun to, to work with. Like, he he doesn't just send yeah. you an email that's black and white. He's like, no, you're gonna get blue here. You're gonna get red here. I'm gonna give you. Yay, colors. Barney. He said that. Yeah, Barney. Yeah, Barney. I love you, man. Yeah, yeah. I want to thank Len for calling in. You came in right at the right time. I mean, you no, have that you style, guys. dude. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you all soon. Yeah. Sure will. Yeah, we will yeah, see you, you all. And Cut You Loose, I love that track, too, by the way. And everyone, again, uh, the Ben Robinson Band will also be playing. Uh, go to Rob Bauer. Uh, if you go to rob-bauerpresents.com, uh, you're going to go stay in, in Yuma. I have to say, check out the Coronadomotorhotel.com. Since you know yes. they've been long-term supporters, you got to go stay they there. They just won an award. They I just the Booking dot com. Yeah. They just won yeah. a, a big award over there. Oh. So check that out, and also keep up with Julian up in the San Diego mountains. Go to Julian June sixteenth, two thousand eighteen, and again uh, the festival is February seventeenth, two thousand eighteen, over in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, Rob, real quick, what are the tickets? The cost of the tickets? We never said said anything. I about think that. they're thirty in advance now. Uh, you got to go to uh, go to my website, and there's a link right over to uh, the Yuma um, ticket site, and okay. I think the 35 uh, the day of the show, 30 in advance right and 35, right. and I cool. think there's a military discount, and uh, there's quite a wonderful group of Marine Corps uh, families out there that we would love to invite, being that I have a Marine Corps background, and oorah, devil dogs, come on down and party. 
Right oh, on. Hi. Is somebody playing Under yeah. Pressure? Who's playing under that? Under Pressure. Was oh, that Under Pressure? It's, not, it's either that or I Size Baby. <laughs> I heard that. Plot dancer discount. I know, okay, yeah. Thank you guys. Oh, We're gonna play. oh, oh! There's going to be there's going to be an after party at Jimmy oh. D's that night. Oh, and, that gets down uh, and dirty over there. Oh yeah. So <laughs> a, a lot of our fans and a lot of the musicians will end up over at Jimmy D's uh, later on that evening for a little after party jam session, and uh, probably some squat dancing will be involved. So. All right, everybody, See, bring your cameras. We gotta go. I know we're gonna have to. Yeah. We're gonna have to show off our squat. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. let me hear some McCoy Brothers. That's yeah. it. That's it. We're gonna play "Give Me My Medicine" uh, from the McCoy Brothers. Check them out on YouTube, on Facebook. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks and so much. Go, everybody, go to the festival. And uh, if you're looking to learn more about Yuma, go to nationalparktraveling.com and type in Yuma. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks so ladies. Much. Love you, ladies. Appreciate it. See you soon. Thank you, Rob. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Give Here it my, is. Give me my medicine. Give me my medicine. Here it is. I know. Go to California and this is what you'll get. <laughs> Shock!